The deeper we explore the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, the more secrets we find, and today I have another 15 for you all. Welcome to part 9 of the series, you're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming. I'll be covering such things as past game references, scenes that people are yet to have seen, hidden events and how to trigger them, and small details that players may not have realised for example. As with all of the others, each one will be separated into its own chapter, so if you're watching one you're already aware of, you have the easy option to skip to the next. If you enjoy what you see, you all know what to do, and please be aware that there will be spoilers ahead for anyone who has yet to complete the main story. With that being said, let's get in to what we came here to see. 15 Secrets Still Unseen by Some Players Part 9 I want to start today's list with a previous game reference that I believe some may not have noticed. In the mission, Enter, pursued by a memory, Arthur and Javier are tasked by Abigail in tracking down her son's father and Red Dead Redemption protagonist, John Marston. After a trek over the treacherous snow-covered mountains, the pair finally find their lost brother. John has some fresh scars over his face, thanks to a recent wolf attack. These infamous scars are actually referenced in the previous Rockstar Games title, Grand Theft Auto V. In the prologue mission of the game, Michael Townley, Trevor Phillips and Bradley Snyder are on the run from the law after a heist on the Bobcat Security Depot in Londondorf, North Yankton. During their escape, the vehicle the trio are travelling in is hit by a passing train, forcing it to be wrecked upon a tree. After emerging, players will notice that protagonist Michael, due to the accident, has some fresh new scars of his own, with the two on the right of his face bearing a striking resemblance to that of John Marston. Players heading south to New Austin may come across this young gentleman whom I encountered in the Armadillo Saloon. If you choose to chase down and search the man, you'll find a letter of interest on his person. It reads as follows. I'm going to be a cowboy like you read in the books. By the time you read this, I might be one already. I've taken the train out west. I'm going to be a hero, not an outlaw. I promise I'm a good guy. I must be, you raised me. And any lies you hear about me, they ain't true. I never went near Lynette Wilding. She's a slut, like you said, but I never. I just ran away to be a cowboy. That baby with the funny eye, he ain't mine. Don't believe nothing you hear. I'm a good boy, like you raised me. It seems that the young father was scared of the huge responsibility. Do you think the wannabe cowboy ran away from his past, or did he indeed just leave to live a life out on the open plains? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. While still an armadillo, it's pretty difficult to miss the fact that the entire town is overrun with cholera. Residents are in a bad way, and most businesses are closed down due to the plague. But there seems to be one individual who's unaffected by the outbreak, the owner of the general store, Herbert Moon. Upon meeting the man, you will notice he appears to be in relatively good health. If you choose to loot him, you'll find the following letter from his daughter. We've already read aloud one letter, so I'll leave this one on screen for a moment for you to pause if you wish to read. To summarise, the store owner disapproved of his daughter's choosing of her partner based solely on his race. It also states how much he loved his grocery store. If players head to Bile's Edge in the bayou, which most of you may know as the home of the strange man, they can find a map of Armadillo on a table with a caption reading, I offered you happiness or two generations. You made your choice. This relates to the letter we found on Herbert's moon, and it seems he chose to have two generations, in both his daughter and granddaughter, over happiness. This would explain how his daughter would marry a man whom he would disapprove of, and how the town around him fell apart, causing a suffering to his business. 
the next one is a secret that most may know but haven't been able to trigger it. It comes in two parts. Firstly, in the Heartlands, players will need to find this abandoned shack called Henny's Bethel. Upon entering the gruesome scene, you will find at the far table a letter titled as Mysterious Sermon, which I'll once again leave on screen for a moment. There's a couple of important things in the writings that we need to pay attention to. The top line, which reads, at the second hour, under the half moon, and the eighth line, which references Mount Chan. In our current location, at Hanny's Bethel, if the player waits until around 2am, the second hour, they will be encountered by an unidentified flying object, as it casts a green light over the shack whilst hovering above. This will last either until sunrise or until the player leaves the shack. Secondly, heading to the peak of Mount Chan, as referenced in line 8 of the sermon, at around the hours of 1am, players will encounter a second UFO, this time from a distance. There's a random encounter in the town of Van Horn, where a drunkard requires the player's assistance. Hey, lady. Hey. I need some help. I don't know this place well. My sense of direction. It ain't good. Hey, where's the train station? Going around in circles here. Head that way. Can't miss it. You are a gentleman, sir. <sighs> if you decide to mislead the man and then follow him, you are introduced to a pretty comical scene. This train seems really quiet. No. Oh. Although beware, if you're not quick enough to fish the man from the waters, he will ultimately drown. To the south of Saint-Denis, at the docks, there's a passageway that looks like it's being used to import goods. When product is delivered to Saint-Denis by boat, it's traditionally delivered from the top side of the docks, so what would the purpose of this underground tunnel be? It appears to be a smuggler's tunnel used to bring in products under the radar of the city. The local law are already known to be on the take from crime tycoon Angelo Bronte, as we can see by the two officials standing by, possibly waiting for a delivery and a bribe. What do you believe this tunnel was used for? In the final part of the Pouring Forth Oil mission, members of the Vandalin Gang have plans to perform a heist upon a train during nightfall. As the four manage to both stop and board the train, the robbing begins. Both John and Arthur stick together, heading through the carriages, emptying the pockets of the passengers. When a few refuse to give in to the criminals, John beckons Arthur to become forceful, prompting the player to give the passenger a little encouragement. But what some may have missed is what happens if you take no action. If you stand idly by, John will be forced to act instead. Just off the Kamasar River, southwest of Mossy Flats, players may stumble across a group of deceased prisoners that were former residents of the Sisica Penitentiary. First I thought that these people were escapees, but if you inspect a little more closely, you may come to a different conclusion. All of the prisoners are wearing chain gang bracelets, and some have their hands behind their heads, indicating they may have been executed by the guards whilst out on a work detail of some sorts. There's even one that's been beheaded. What happened to the victims in the forest isn't clear, but it seems their escorts chose to put an end to their lives. Heading way down south in New Austin, players may discover a grueling sight at the Del Lobo Rock. Upon the scorched earth, there's a burnt cart with two male victims and two animals. 
these poor souls are smouldering, indicating that they fell to a lightning strike and that this occurred pretty recently. The destroyed trees around this further adds to that speculation. Something that's a little puzzling about all this is the position of the cart and the victims itself. It's as if the cows plowed into one of the trees and were struck by lightning at the same time. That's some bad luck. What are your thoughts on the events? To the northwestern edges of Lake Isabel, players may find this unfortunate soul who seems to have succumbed to the elements, frozen to death in nothing but a blanket. Nearby are the remains of what was potentially his steed. In the cart next to the corpse, players will find a chest containing a little bit of money and a piece of colbat carving wood. When taken to a fence, the clerk can, along with the aid of a few other items, craft the boar tusk talisman, granting the player's horse a permanent reduction in both health and stamina core drain by 10%. The identity of the individual is unknown, but he could have been potentially part of a larger group of travellers, who had left their cattle behind nearby at Spider Gorge, in what was the real-life reference to the Donner Party. For the next one, I want to show you guys a reference to a previous Rockstar Games title that some may not have realised. Players of Canis Canemedit, also known as Bully, will be aware that upon entering chapter 2 of the game, where we're free to explore the city of Bullworth, that the carnival is in town. At this site, there's a freak show that you can explore. Aside from the reference to the Siamese twins, which I've shown in a previous video, there's a second one here, a skeletal man. The man, dressed in a top hat and trousers, may remind you of a peculiar character from both of the Red Dead Redemption titles. The Strange Man. If you look at the family portrait to the rear wall of the room, you can see the man in his regular form, further adding to this resemblance. If players are to check out below the Bacchus Bridge in the Ambro region, they will find the site of a derailed train fallen from the bridge itself. If the carriages are explored in the first one, you will find a chest containing a large jewellery bag and a bunch of cash. But what some players may not have realised is that the carriage that's landed vertically also has some goodies inside. To get to this one can be a little tough to do, so make sure you have a few health tonics. Making your way to the edge of the rock just above the cart, you can drop down inside, although this can be easily missed. Once you're successful, just continue your descent to the bottom, where you find a bottle of aged pirate's rum, some valerian root, a little ammunition, but more importantly, two gold bars. This could be a good start if you're just beginning your campaign. There's quite a lot of hidden treasure in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, so I'll quickly show you guys one more. In the Cumberland Forest, slightly north of Carmody Dell, there's a single tree upon a cliff edge, and at this location are the remains of a gentleman who was halfway through burying something when he passed. In this half-dug grave is a chest. Inside are three jewellery bags and $40 worth of cash. What caused the death of the person is unknown, but them clutching their stomach may indicate a possible poisoning. There's a hidden detail right near the start of the game that I think quite a few players may not have noticed. Referring back to the mission, enter pursued by a memory, just as we did at the beginning of the video, when searching for John, we find this horse, which Javier Escuela informs us was the one that John was riding from Blackwater. Before continuing on with the search, if you choose to more closely inspect the deceased animal, or more specifically its saddle, you will realise that John's original steed had its own custom saddle. Did you notice this? As if the area of Butcher's Creek wasn't creepy enough, players who explore may discover that there are more than just animal bones strewn about the place. 
when trying to interact with the populace, you will come to be aware that they aren't very talkative. Closely inspecting one of the buildings, you will find that buried towards the bottom are the skeletal remains of humans. Are these former residents of the village, or is there a particular reason that these peculiar inhabitants are staying quiet? Maybe it's something to do with the terrifying butcher. What do you think? I hope you all enjoyed part 9 of the series. You've been listening to Phil of Philby Gaming. And if you did, you all know what to do. You can get in touch if you wish by following me over on Instagram, which is both on screen and linked in the video description below. Do you know of any secrets that you believe some players may have missed? Feel free to share with us in the comments section. Thank you all for watching and hopefully I'll see you in part 10.